ultimately the go between you and I is just to give you some ideas yeah. in terms of uh, how you can feel far more confident mm -hmm. on those uh, short range parts, right? Because yeah, that's sure. the text that you sent me. Yeah. It's the current status is, if I, re if I remember correctly, so fill me in if I'm mm -hmm. misremembering, is that uh, the caliber of golf you're playing right now, you want to play really well, mm -hmm. but it's different than the competitive golf you used to play as a pro or even yeah. as an elite level am, where you mm -hmm. had to hold everything out. Exactly. Now you don't, yeah. and so you feel a little bit less uh, steady, perhaps, Yeah. over the two to five footers. Obviously with good good, there's a lot of, I mean, the, the gimme range is pretty friendly. Yeah. Generous. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Pretty generous, and then if it's like a three-man scramble, I mean, I'm, I'm the best putter usually, so I'm going last, so mm -hmm. even there's like a four or five footer, yeah. someone else is making it before I even get a chance to go and I just move on. So I think, and we just did a stroke play type tournament type thing with Good Good mm -hmm. um, on the way back from Arizona. And that just kind of opened my eyes. I'm like, holy crap, like I've not putted many of these yeah. two, two to three footers, four footers yeah. at all. And it's just like, for me, I, I believe, because I've always been a very good putter, in lot, especially the last five years or so. Mm -hmm. I think putting is just 95% confidence For sure. and I just know, I just feel like I have no confidence because I haven't seen many go in in yeah. the last nine or ten months so and then going back to that text message that we shared it's like when you don't expose yourself to those types of situations mm -hmm. it's not only the physical piece it's like well I wonder yeah but moreover to your point the 95 percent you're not exposed to the psychological let's say challenge mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and the expectation that from two to five feet it should be pretty cake. Yeah, exactly. And so yeah. when you stand over one, you have this no, you have this library that's not recent. Exactly. It's mm -hmm. only back in your heyday of AM golf. Yeah. Right. So what we're going to do first here, first um, step is check the hardware. Mm -hmm. right? How are we moving the putter from ten feet and then shorter range? Okay. To see if there's any reason inside a sterile lab setting, no pressure. Mm -hmm why would we expect the stroke to not perform? Yeah. So we're both going to assume that we're going to pass this test real quick, mm -hmm. three to five minutes, there's a readiness to perform, and then we're going to go outside. And okay. then we'll check the software, meaning the mindset piece that then hopefully plays nicely with the hardware piece. Yeah. Okay. And then it's just a matter of giving you some training tasks, or principally, hopefully, just one training task yeah. that has levels of difficulty within it that allow you, when you're able to practice, um, to get the results and expose yourself and okay. feel more confident. Right? Awesome. So Perfect. we're gonna be putting from that white dot there. Okay. We've done this before. I have uh, some data from okay. years back, 2016 in fact. Did, did we do this last? Yeah, we did. We were just okay. in the old bay up yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, I remember that's, yeah, it was mm -hmm. confusing me on where to go. Yeah. Cause I remember we were on that side last time. I'll switch positions with you. That's yeah. the first step here is me calibrating my sand pot lab, the yeah. tech that would then give us some you were putting claw last time. You still claw? No, I'm just conventional yep. now. And are you putting yep. with a line, line frame? I do. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. The side stamp on the ball or a drawn line? A drawn line. Okay. We'll yep. use a drawn line. Okay. Well, you're set to go. Yeah. Perfect. I'm gonna roll five, maybe a few more than five. Okay. And here we go. How frequently would your ball be rolling into a run like that one? Very, yeah. yeah. That's one thing the guys always talk about when we play. It's like my golf ball always seems to just yeah, hug the ground ball, right? and roll yeah. into a run. And... The limited amount of time that you are able to practice, is there anything technically that you check before you get into um, um, the round or performance buddy yeah i mean for me putting is usually most of the time it's all about setup if my setup feels good and comfortable then mm -hmm. usually the stroke feels really good yeah um recently i'd say the only thing i've been checking on is i think because the lack of confidence on short putts i've been a little jabby with it through just mm -hmm. kind of like trying to force the ball in mm -hmm. so i'm trying to just shorter putts and stuff i'm trying to just make sure i just kind of almost keep this angle right here and just mm -hmm. kind of just stroke the ball instead of jabbing at it and just um it hasn't been like crazy jabby or anything but just enough to affect the club face a little bit i'm gonna grab those three and roll okay. them back to you because they have nice lines on them and Perfect. i'll let you put it down cool you can put another ball down in that okay. same spot your strike's changed a lot since 2016. Has it? Yeah. I 
And then one more, and then we're gonna do a new capture, which is the short range. Okay. And see what we can tell. Okay, thank you. If you were evaluating those five and giving them a, just a collective grade in terms of the quality of the roll, what grade would you give them? I'd say A minus. Okay. Most of them were rolling pretty never end and felt good. Mm -hmm. A couple of them were a little wobbly, but not bad. Okay, so on the level, the stimp in this room is like 14. Okay. Yeah. It's like yeah. your time at Augusta. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I'm going to put this down about five feet only because that allows me to capture a stroke. You're in distance in 10, should be a foot past. Okay. So that allows me to capture a short stroke, Perfect. almost simulating like a three to four footer. Yeah. Okay. Oh, oh. that was lower. But they didn't necessarily say, oh my gosh, take action on this. Yeah. But we need to bring it out here in the wild, so to speak, mm -hmm. and, um, and put it to the test. Oh, for sure. Your all capture was phenomenal. It makes sense why around that same time period, whatever you were doing would add up to good performance, whether yeah, it was sure. at that time or after that time. Mm -hmm. So that all makes sure. sense. Okay, so I have a challenge for you. Okay. And that challenge is three, four, five foot. So I've got dots, four, five, and six foot. Four, five, and six, four, five, and six, four, five, and six spread around. So no two putts are the same, although yeah. there are some similarities in the putts mm -hmm. just based on the reads, right? Yep. We're gonna hit the fours, then we're gonna go around and hit the fives, and then we're gonna go around and hit the sixes. So okay. that's 12 total putts. Okay. Uh, out of those 12, let's have a wager, Okay. right? At least, um, from the context of trying to stress test you, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, par or a passing score is 10 out of 12. If you pass, if you make 10 out of 12 going around these four through six dots, uh, you would gain strokes on a PGA Tour level field. Yep. So you should be rewarded for that. Do you mm -hmm. agree? I, I agree, yeah. So I'll pay you 50. Okay. All right. If okay. you make 11 out of 12, I'll pay you 100. Okay. If you make 12 of 12, we'll give you 200. Okay. Okay. All right. Anything less than that 10 level, that passing level PGA mm -hmm. Tour standard, you owe me 50, okay? okay? So that's the only penalty. Perfect, awesome. I wanna see, just as you would, in terms of like the overall routine, okay. go around here, you're competing for cash here. I'm gonna be filming each one as well, so okay. once you go through your process. One for one, now you move on to that one. These are real American dollars we're playing for here, by the way. Yeah. yeah I'm I like it. It gets the gets a little nerves going on the putting green. Yeah, uh huh. Yeah, my belief, and make, let me see if this makes sense to you, because mm -hmm. I always like to bounce my ideas off elite level players, right? Is you can you can only go so far as to simulate a stressful environment, yeah. right? There's just nothing like under the pump, the 300 pound pencil of teeing it up in a Masters yeah. <laughs> or a yeah. US Open or an elite level amateur yeah. event as you play well in for um, 70 years. But the things that might push us closer to simulating that stressful situation is cash. We're doing mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Crowds. We're doing yep. it. Exactly. Right. Or some level of consequences. Right. Mm -hmm. You For gotta sure. clean up every room at the Good Good House. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. That that would take hours. And All right. Hours. Let's carry but, on. Um, no, I agree. I mean, it's yeah. There's no quite simulation like a tournament. Mm -hmm. uh, me and Garrett were actually talking about it yesterday. There's just tournament's just a different feeling. It's a different I mean, animal, yeah. Until you actually put yourself into it, you just don't realize it. Yeah. I was saying I, I could go out to Twin Creeks and shoot 64 every day for two months in a row, but then mm -hmm. you put me in a tournament at Twin Creeks, Yeah. I might still do that, but it's going to feel a lot different. Yeah. It's going to be a lot tougher. Yeah. And it's not <laughs> so, different in any other endeavor. Golf's it, the no. same way. I was speaking to Michael Gervais, who um, was a sports psychologist. In fact, he's a sports psychologist to any number of elite level athletes across all sports domains. but. He was the guy that was the mental counsel to Felix Baumgartner oh, wow. on yeah. Team Red Bull, who jumped from mm -hmm. space. And he said, we could talk to him ad nauseum about what he's about to try and do, risking yeah. his life, jumping from somewhere up there. Yeah. But there's no w real way to prepare for someone someone for that until they're up there. Yeah, I mean, exactly. So exactly. We're so going to go I... as close as we can to bringing out your um, best performing self here. Yep, I like it. Hmm. Have to make a lot more now. Start. 
If I can give you feedback after the four-footers, you haven't demonstrated any jabbiness yet. Have you felt any? Did I miss seeing I have, anything? I have not. Good. No. Okay, carry on. I think that's also part of me trying to make sure I'm stroking it. Yeah, not. like that's the stroke intent, right? Mm, yeah. And that's exactly. a good thing. Yeah, exactly. I think if the viewers pick up anything from this, it's like elite level players so frequently play with a swing feel. Oh, it's yeah, not totally sure. brain off. No. Right? It's okay to I, be I brain wish on. it could be, but it's... But do you? I mean... Because here's what happens when you go totally brain off. Mm -hmm. Your brain then becomes kind of this open reservoir to do, maybe not a reservoir is the wrong word, but it, it can be distracted pretty quick. But when you yeah. give it a task, some sort of, um, we'll call it a critical focus, then that becomes its job. Yeah. That's... And that critical focus for you is, okay, just hold that wrist angle and complete the stroke. Mm -hmm. If I can take care of this right here, then that just becomes a consequence of doing well here. Exactly, yeah. So you're That's less true. outcome bound and you're more process bound. That's true. I mean, I, will, I mean, my best rounds I've played, best tournaments I've played, there's always been a certain swing thought or a certain yeah. thought in putting or whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. but That echoes every conversation yeah. I've had with any elite level player. For sure. Okay, five footers, here we go. Great stroke. Thank you. Stroke. Thank you. Uh. Got to go clean now. Yep. Got to go, go clean. Still in the pay window. Got to go five for five. He's in the fight. He's in the fight. <laughs> so that's what, four six footers left? Four six footers left, yep. Make percentage PGA Tour 73 to 75%. All right. Great stroke, great read here too. Nice, yeah. That's phenomenal. I was confident about that yep. one. Didn't turn. Okay. We have two remaining. Yep. Two Make remaining. These. Unfortunately, you're gonna lose 50. Yeah. But the reason we're gonna hit the next two is from a coaching or a training standpoint, so if I put myself in my shoes, I'm like, I'd like to establish a baseline. And if I was playing or doing this, I'd like to establish a baseline as well. The mm -hmm. first time I tried this, um, what did I score? Mm -hmm. And also, I wanna hit the next two because they establish some sort of uh, visible pattern yeah, of error, sure. right? So we've yeah. got three and two of them are low and that one was high. Yeah. That one was high on the same leg that the first one was low on. So yeah, sure. let's carry on, let's hit the okay. last two. I'm gonna give you a chance to win the cash back too. Okay, okay. Because there's always a round two, right? Yep. Round three, a round four. There's always the ability to bounce back. Turn. Okay, talk me right. through your performance before I give you the feedback from a coach's eye. Mm -hmm. And the coach's eye is not only what I see, but also what I can confirm yeah. here. Talk me through the performance. Um, I thought I thought I put a lot of good rolls on it, even those last two that I missed. From that, the six that would feet. be a measure of the quality of stroke, right? Yes. Yeah. So the mm -hmm. quality of stroke, give it a grade out of ten. Um, overall, probably seven. Seven. It's yeah. ten. And if it's not a 10, it's a 9.5. Okay. So your new information there is, hmm, as I'm hitting these parts, my feedback is somewhat disconnected with the reality of the quality of the roll I put on it. Mm -hmm. They're end over end and they're launching where my ball is aimed. And where my putter is aimed is where my ball is aimed. So the physical piece that is well within our control, you're executing yeah. fantastically, okay. fantastically. So that like that four, first four footer I yep. missed. So that was that a pull or was that just low not read. enough? It was low read. Low read. Yep. So those are some I've noticed a lot. Right to lefters. Mm -hmm. um, this is a bad beat here. This is a really bad because the grain's going that direction. Yeah. But the further you tip towards this side, you start to reach a point on the green that's far more level. Which like it's right, yeah, that, like the last putt didn't want to turn at all. It didn't want to turn yeah. at all. But your four here turned and your mm -hmm. five here turned. Yep. So if I'm summarizing what I see right now. The number of misses were almost split 50-50 high side, low side. Did you miss mm -hmm. four or did you miss five? I missed four. Yeah, you yep. missed four. So we were. We were split 50-50. Two on the low side, two on the high side. Okay. I said I'm going to give you a chance to win your money back. You owe me 50, but how you earn that 50 back is with a volume of work mm -hmm. that also validates that you can achieve the standard we set at the start, which okay. is 10 yeah. out of 12. Yep. So all you have to do is practice this for any number of minutes to push towards that level. But here's what we're gonna do. 
Okay. We're going to make the task more difficult. And I'm going to let you choose how to make the task more difficult. We're going to narrow the capture width of the cup. Okay. We're going to start back over here at the four footer. Okay. I'm going to give you two options. We're going to start the four footer that you hit low right there. Because mm -hmm. okay. the, these reeds were actually quite difficult right here. It looked yeah. like it was moving right to left, but it was such a soft amount. You basically mm -hmm. play them all straight yep. and they stayed straight. Yeah. You got grain going this direction. You got some slope going in that direction, but they wanted to hold. But as soon as you got to here, this is like a 1.3% yeah. main point. That's when you started to underread it. So your two choices are this. I can block the low side of the hole with a ball marker, mm -hmm. and success is the ball getting to the hole or, or uh, made putt without touching the ball marker, or I can use a cup reducer. This one is more difficult than this one. Mm -hmm. There's a level above this that's even more difficult again, mm. which is an entire yeah. circle cup reducer. It actually has a section right in between it where we could even narrow it up some more. Mm -hmm. I think this one's sufficient to push your vision a little higher to where you then have to match up the speed yep. to gives the ball the greatest chance of being captured by the hole. Yeah. Right, the faster the ball's moving, the smaller the relative size of mm -hmm. the hole. Four and a quarter inches shrinks down as soon yep. as you hit it hard. I'm not saying you hit any of them too hard, yep. but I'm saying how you bridge the gap between eight out of 12 to 10 out of 12 or 12 out of 12 mm -hmm. is matching up what you do physically with slightly better reads. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's, that's just inter interesting to me a lot because I feel like I've seen a decent amount of putts that are right to left mm -hmm. that miss on the low side. Mm -hmm. And I just kind of assumed I was pulling all of them Yeah. when really I might've just not been playing enough break. And yeah. I think what that provides you is a question though. Yeah. I'm not saying the answer will always be you're doing the things yeah. physically you need to. Mm -hmm. But what we have today is confirmation inside that your start lines are phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Confirmation outside, I filmed every one of them, the start lines are phenomenal. Mm -hmm. The only mis-execution in stroke on one of the putts was a slight toe contact. Yep. But that's not going to cause it to start off line. If anything, no. that'll only cause it to roll a little slower. Yeah. And it wasn't one of the ones you missed. Yeah. So there's really nothing to take action on yet. Yeah. But there's always a need for you as an elite level player, any player that wants to be elite, is to do the technical work for sure. that then establishes that you are ready to perform. Yeah. Let's go around again okay. and let's see. see if we can earn that money back. Perfect. The only penalty here is work. Okay. Right? All right. You go around until you're complete. Move on. Okay. I'll move this ball marker each and every time. Okay. Love the job. Thank you. First miss on your start line. That was definitely a pull. Was it? Yep. Mm -hmm. Take a look at the center of the putter. So the line on the putter that finds basically the point above the sweet spot. See where it's traveling at that point in the stroke? Mm -hmm. So traveling back to the ball, it's outside the target line relative to where it went back. Yep. So that's the same point coming back. And so that path has now shifted where? Left. Yep. And the face followed it. So that's a pull on path. But in reality, the path pulled the face to the left, mm -hmm. and the face is responsible for launching the ball, isn't it? Yep. Okay, well, you're still in the fight. Okay. Very nice. Thank you. I'll just see that one. You're hitting what is now called an adversity ramp. Yeah. And that adversity ramp is, mm, I've missed two, I can't miss any more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's a good thing yeah. to be exposed to. You're not satisfied that you've missed two already, but what you are is you're exposing yourself to a greater level of psychological stress, just exactly. the completion stress that says, I can't miss another yeah. one. Well, I mean, I'm okay with this, but I'm not okay with it. It's practice, but it still gets the heart rate going a little bit. Which yeah, is, right, exactly. Sucks, I do not like missing those, but also uh -huh. it somewhat resembles tournament. What kept that last one out of the hole? I think, I mean, a little less speed, it would have gone in. The pace, and, the pace for yeah. the line you launched it on, exactly. I, I now do I'm feel pushing like that's you to a higher yeah. line, mm -hmm. and you hit it through the break, and so therefore it didn't go in, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Right. Absolutely wonderful. It's gonna feel so good when you make these next five. Very nice. Yeah. What did that one just give us a clue on? The hold, yeah? It gave yeah. us a clue on it. Still on, trying to hang to the left, which this six-footer did as well. Yeah. 
Which I just don't see. I just don't. I just can't see it. But yeah, and, and sometimes, and sometimes you won't. Yeah. But that's where aim point, I think, becomes an effective tool to at least give you an ability to find the clues, the yeah. clues in the ground, the clues in your perception. And so, if you don't have a level, I think it's mm -hmm. beneficial. I've got a putt set up over here where aim point would actually lead us astray, unfortunately. So it's a okay. good tool to have in your back pocket to use when maybe you're looking for some level of um, clarification okay. or confirmation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. For sure. Okay, let's do it. Four for four here, bud. There's one. Sorry, four for four now. My bad, that was a five footer. Right, so we gotta make the last four again. Mm-hmm. I mean, just love the quality of the stroke in that last one and so yeah. many others. Yeah. Yeah. That last one felt really good. What did that putt demonstrate? That demonstrated that the right speed on that line perfect, was perfect. Perfect yeah. marriage of line Which that was and the same speed. line that I had last time on that six-footer. Exactly. And I could tell I hit a good putt stroke-wise and line-wise in the last one, but now that I actually match up the speed, Indeed. It goes in dead center. Yep. Indeed. It's a make. <laughs> it's a make. make. A little this, bit of a low this, make. Yeah, this is a constraint. This is a constraint yeah. trying to shift your vision. Yeah. But just because you touch it, as long as it goes in, we're still count the make. Okay. Okay. I know I didn't say that in advance. In fact, this one probably doesn't even have much of a low side based on what it did the first go around and what it did in that last five footer. Good matchup of speed on the last one. Yep. <laughs> that just blows my mind that it does not turn. <laughs> yeah, but I you, you, it. Launch, you launched at left edge. Uh, yeah. Right, you aimed at left edge, it launched left edge. Okay. And that ball's roll started off like Aaron Rodgers, just mm -hmm. a pure spiral, whoever your favorite quarterback yep. is. Maybe Patrick Mahomes, I don't know. <laughs> not Patrick, I'll, I'll give it a... <laughs> A, a Dak Prescott, I guess. Okay, we'll go, Dak yeah, Pres yeah. we'll go Dak Prescott. We'll go Dak Prescott spiral. And then the grain that seems like it might not actually be this direction mm -hmm. shifts the axis the ball's rolling yeah. and just wants to hang out to the left. Okay, make this yeah. last one. So I guess, uh, I mean, because I was trying to play that still like left inside. Yeah. Uh huh. Even though it's like I know it's not going to turn much, I still. Yeah, you were splitting half in, half out right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's where the ball ended up. Okay. By the way, one last question before we hit this last putt. Okay. Heart rate in the last one. Greater it, than any other? It was, I'd say it was greater on the one before. Just because. Really? Why? Just because it's kind of, it's, it's one of those you have to play outside the hole. Mm -hmm. And it's just kind of, you really have to just stroke it and just trust it. And, and it's kind of, you just tap it and yeah. Yeah, just kind of bleed it down. Interesting. And, My thought would be the last one, and here's why. The last one has the appearance like it should move to the right. Mm -hmm. Our history says it didn't move to the right. And so in, in your mind, you probably only got half a hole, maybe a quarter of a hole yeah. to make the putt. Yeah. Because I don't think you'll ever sit, set up to that one and aim at center. No, no, and that's why I think I think it's why I almost played it like just inside left. Yeah. It's like I'm playing it there just in case it does finally move right. All right. But also if it stays straight like it has been, it'll still go in. Okay. But I mean, my my heart is still going on that one. Okay. You know. But yeah. um, I'd say the last two were pretty pretty similar. I wonder what the heart rate's gonna be doing now. Oh, it's going. I I, I do want to make this putt. That's for sure. Beautiful. Wonderful. Well done. Thank you. Good. Didn't take long for you to earn your 50 back. Mm -hmm. Didn't take long for you to validate the physical skill piece. The hardware mm -hmm. is in a readiness to perform. Yep. It didn't take long for you to show me as well that for the most part, the software that might cause you to be jabbery is also under control. But there's a software piece in there that is the artistic side of putting. Mm -hmm. And that's that marriage of, can I see nuance in green reading? And then once I do that, can I match up the speed I intend to give that ball the greatest chance mm -hmm. of being captured by the hole? Yeah. And that's the part of practice that seems like it's most um, relevant and necessary for you right now. Mm -hmm. So I think there's a readiness for you to putt okay. really well, but there's gonna be some work required. And this would be the exercise. The variations that you could create around this to make it a little bit more difficult would be, like I said, cash crowns and consequence. Mm -hmm. The consequence sometimes is just competing against someone else. Yeah. As long as you see that someone else as a peer-to-peer -peer mm -hmm. challenge. Yeah, right? for sure. Yeah. So a similarly 
elite level player that you're competing against and there's something on the line. Mm -hmm. Thoughts or questions? No, I completely agree. Um, I will say the speed thing, I think a lot of that probably has to do with the good stuff as well. It's mm -hmm. like we're playing scrambles a lot. You don't really think about speed too much in putting. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing I've all just in college and after college, I was a very good putter, I think, because I did have good speed. And um, I still obviously think I can. I still think I am capable of doing it. It's just uh, something I've not been, that's not been the main focus of my putting for the last nine, 10 months. Yeah. So that makes sense. I think there's some things that, um, yeah, that just makes a lot of, because I, cause I have been, I've noticed with maybe it has been just a little jabbiness, putting a little too much right hand into it, whatever it may be, but just short putts have been going in a lot firmer, mm -hmm. even the way they do go in. Mm -hmm. And I think that is part of probably the scrambles and all that again, not enough practice on being able to see my line, put down that tee or that ball marker like I told you I did in college a lot yeah. and like we did today. Yeah. Um, just seeing that there and trying to almost roll around it, making sure it doesn't get low of that mm -hmm. is just a good visual. Yeah. I think that's, I agree, that's something I need to work on and kind of get back to um, awesome. just to be able to, you know, so I'm not over a four footer and just thinking, uh, let's see it going to the left, I'll just play it right center and, you know, figure it out almost. I actually have to, you know, read it, think, okay, this is actually probably a just outside right putt and maybe, you know, imagine that ball marker there and I kind of see with good speed it going in the right center of the hole or the whatever it may be. The so. best putters I've ever been around putt with such an acuity, such a tight picture of what they're trying to achieve. Mm -hmm. And then the tide of their intent, and whether it's a, a landmark like this bright green piece of mm -hmm. grass here, or a landmark like the blade of grass that's um, sitting in front of the hole, or the back edge of the hole, a blemish mm -hmm. in the back um, dirt uh, of the hole, or it's something even here, or a combination of all of those, the more they have this visual image of what they're trying to achieve, mm -hmm. and they bring about the greater likelihood of the physical piece producing what their intent is. Mm -hmm. Because the difference between a made or a missed putt is oftentimes for a player at your caliber, fractions of degrees, mm -hmm. right, in start line, we saw that once. Yep. But outside of that, it's fractions of millimeters in where you aim for the type of read and fractions of what's, what we'll call just ball rolls. Did I roll it, roll it one ball too hard or three balls too mm -hmm. hard? Yep. That cause the intended break to not uh, yeah. yield a made putt. So we've got the right type of work, we've got the need for work, we've got the need for some level of stress and equipped with an ability to check your technique using whatever, like you use a putting tool, right? Um, yes, I do. I, yeah. yeah. Um, you got an ability to check your technique and then stress test your technique, the hardware piece, the software piece, and the inner athlete will come out and produce the elite level results you're yeah. accustomed to. For oh. sure. No, uh, it's, it's great. And I, I mean, I'm obviously I appreciate the help and I think one of the biggest things takeaways for me is that like that four footer I miss at first one because mm -hmm. I that's the one I've been seeing like I said a lot that kind of right to left or I miss low mm -hmm. in my mind I always just kind of thought I was pulling it and I thought that's kind of been the one of my I don't want to say fears but kind of in the back of my mind like mm -hmm. you know on right to left or sometimes yeah seeing that miss left again and um I think that's also why sometimes I tend to jam it in. It's like I don't want to miss it low. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think the more you have an ability to miss it left, the more you are going to be jabbing it in firmer because yeah. mm -hmm. the harder you hit it, the more likely the face to path stays a little bit more square exactly. longer. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's a, a, a good point of closure there. It's the need for feedback even at an elite level is, I thought I made one mistake when I missed this first four to four, but it was mm -hmm. actually a different mistake. But then yeah. over here on the four or the five footer that you missed second go round, mm -hmm. there was that over the top, if you want to call yeah. it that, or a left path shift that sent the face to path there. Mm -hmm. So you still have to um, dot your I's and cross your T's, meaning exactly. check the technical yeah. proficiency that's not contributing to error, mm -hmm. and then know that it's only speed, line, marriage. Yeah, yeah. because yeah. that just soothes, soothes my mind a lot because yeah. I, the whole time I was thinking, I was just, oh, man, there's right to lefters, I'm just pulling a lot, how's the space getting closed, yeah. did impact, blah, blah, and it's actually just, I'm probably just not playing enough for reading. Yeah, and right on. Not, not trusting <laughs> that line, so. Beautiful, man. Thank you so much for the yeah. help. Good job. Good yeah, job. I appreciate it. it was, no worries. It was nice seeing you again. Yeah. Nice seeing you in a lesson again. Yeah. Obviously, saw you, you a couple weeks ago at the uh -huh. Desert Open, but yeah. um, you had to play with Steve for <laughs> the whole round. That was interesting to watch. <laughs> it was a blast, yeah. yeah. Count, but, you guys um, can count me in any time. No, that was a lot yeah. of fun. So it was, it was a blast, yep. yeah. I appreciate it. Thanks cool. for the help. All right. Good That's luck today. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate it. All right, side balls, countdown. All right, yeah. What are the expectations here? You said, I mean, I think speaking of fast. All throughout college, I'm fast. Now, 
I feel like I'm gonna be like 123, 124. Uh, All that. The ball speed's pushing 92, yeah. I would think so. And then, lately I've been ripping it, so. Yeah. We'll yeah, see. You're pretty far past me. So All right. Right, we, we'll see what. When we get back, so I didn't get stuck into the vortex. <laughs> All right, here we go, pull up. Sounds fast. One eight six out of the gates. Wow. Come on, track man. One twenty four four. Holy jeez. Okay. okay. I really wasn't expecting that with that swing either. How fast do you need to get it going? You know, you've already exceeded what you expected. How fast do you need to get it going? I'm gonna say one twenty seven. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna say one twenty seven. service anything up to validate your fields if this, yeah. is, this is what I do to create power. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. I just, yeah. It's more education for me. For sure. And yeah, I mean, like I said, I've been, like I said, I've, I've been hitting it further lately and I was just interested to see what if I was just hitting an extra solid or if actually the speed is going up. No, it's you. It's the horsepower. Yeah. yeah. And I think my speed or my swing has gotten so much better in the last year or so just mechanics wise uh -huh. that now I can finally 
everything's just synced up consistently, yeah. and I can feel like I can go after a little, drive a little harder if I want. And how much of the 128, 129 horsepower, or power, is a function of what you do off the golf course? Do you more, do you more? I think a lot. I mean, I do work out. The last couple of weeks haven't been been a little bit more. Uh, I mean, we've been traveling and all that, and I get back in the routine. But um, I do work out basically, I'd say average about five times a week, mm -hmm. and um, do a lot of legs. Luckily, I was blessed with. You know, tree trunks for legs, yeah. and uh, but yeah. I do try to build them up even more. And you get a pro jumper as a same <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Uh -huh. Exactly, I do, <laughs> I do. Um, yeah, I mean, I do a lot of stuff off the course, trying to just strength training, and and, um, and obviously just that mixed in with getting my swing in a better spot where everything can be synced up, and yeah. I feel confident with it. Right. Then um, those two together, I guess. is Added up to 128 miles an hour. So. Work up the hardware, <laughs> work it off course in yep, the gym, yep. and then the mindset of speed. Exactly. And you too can swing it at 129. Yeah. <laughs> That's all it takes. <laughs> Good man. Good man. That's crazy. It is. Yeah. You do it right. I'll say this just in case we yeah. ever need to reflect back. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I'd love to do that. this again at some yeah. point. Maybe a checkup on putting or something or whatever. We can do it. We can do it, buddy. I appreciate it. No